Oh, what is that in the background? So, I can see how it might look like I unleashed an unspeakable horror into the world, but I can explain. You see, for the last 100 days, I've actually been trying to prevent this exact kind of thing from happening. I'm just really bad at my job of being a fisherman. What does any of this have to do with fish? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me start from the beginning. My story begins with a job listing for a local town's angler, which sounded like easy cash. But while sailing towards the town, I was smothered by a dense fog, causing me to completely crash my ship. Before losing consciousness, I was able to catch a glimpse of a large mysterious lighthouse. When I finally came to, I was greeted by the mayor of Greater Mara, a short stout man who kinda reminded me of another mayor I knew. While talking to the mayor, he informed me that my last boat had been hopelessly damaged in the foggy wreck, and my belongings were relocated to one of the older vessels the town had on hand. The mayor also cautioned me to be back by sundown, which I took as a polite warning. Finally, I don't suppose I need to say this, but get back by sundown before the don't tell me what to do, before setting out on my first fishing trip. Fishing in Drudge is pretty unique. Once moving over to a a bubbling fishing spot, you can attempt to catch a fish. This is where things get complicated. Depending on what you're trying to reel in, a corresponding minigame is triggered, usually in the form of a series of skill checks. Passing enough skill checks rewards you with your catch, but failing them resets your progress. The minigames also get more difficult based on the rarity of what's on the line, but for the moment skill checks were simple since I was only fishing for smaller catches. Don't worry though, pretty soon you'll find out why my name is Clutch and not Skill Check. While filling my boat with fish, I discovered my first bottled message. The message was from a newly married wife named Julie, detailing how happy she was with her fisherman husband who named his boat after her. Not gonna lie, this one was hard to stomach. Love journals aside, I continued to explore during the night since I wanted to defy the mayor and found a glowing black rock that showed me a vision of Greater Meryl burning. Looks like the mayor would have his hands full soon. I was also attacked by a swarm of black birds that stole three of my fish. More of a fight response instead of a flight one, am I right? Don't worry, there's more where that came from. I made my way back to the docks only to find out I had sailed to the neighboring town known as Little Mira, where I met this dock worker guy who let me know that I was in the wrong place if I wanted to sell the fish I caught. While there, I also introduced myself to the trader, who I could sell jewelry and suck in trinkets to if I found some during my fishing trips, but for now, I had nothing to trade. When I made it back to Greater Mira, I was met by the mayor. Bro, he's always pocket watching, bro. To be fair, I was right. He was pocket watching. The mayor informed me that I had to repay my debt for the boat the town gave me. To do so, I would have to sell fish to the local town's fishmonger with a portion of the money going towards paying for the loaned boat. Not a bad deal considering I was selling fish for money anyways. The fishmonger was this super old what guy who didn't have the best vibes, but he paid me, so I guess he's chill. Once selling my fish stock to him, the mayor turned up again. At this point, I knew he was going to be a pain to deal with. I have to tell you guys, right now, I get very annoyed very quickly. And when 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 someone's pocket watching, that is the, the one thing that I cannot stand. Although annoying, the mayor gifted me a research part that could be used for upgrades later. This led me to checking in with the town shipwright, who I would be visiting often for boat repairs and new fishing gear. Dealing with all the old townspeople made me realize I don't like old people, so I was ready to get back on the water ASAP. But before setting sail, I ran into this old lightkeeper woman who didn't like me at all. What was that noise? There's nothing here for someone like you anymore. What? What? Someone like you? Wait, time out, chat. That, that is strike two with this uh, game, by the way. Strike two. People like you? What does that mean? Following my conversation with the decrepit woman, the mayor gave me a parting quest to deliver a package to the dock worker I met earlier at the next town over. The package was damp, and the mayor told me it would spoil soon, so I sailed over immediately. When I got to Little Mero, I delivered the package to the dock worker who was acting a little strange, shielding the package for me while he opened it, leaving me to imagine what it was he could want to hide so badly. Once inspecting the package, he paid me for the delivery and gave me a book to read while at sea that I ignored for now. Day three started started off with some normal fishing before I ran into a boat that resembled mine parked near a tree. There was a person on board who seemed frightened by something they had seen at sea. The person explained that they were delivering another package to the dock worker at Little Mero, but spotted a large sea monster while making the delivery. Since I was heading back towards town to sell my catch for the day, I decided to deliver the package for the scared sailor, being rewarded with another book. Another book? 
The package was larger this time and was leaking some sort of black fluid, but I decided to turn a blind eye to it since I'm just the delivery guy. When I got back to Little Mira, I gave the dock worker the weird package, which he raised to his ear to listen to. A little strange, but like I said earlier, I'm just the delivery guy. The dock worker then told me to wish him luck before taking the package and hurrying down the dock. The worst part being, he didn't even pay me for the delivery, which was especially bad because soon after I crashed my boat. Honestly chat, oh my god, bro, that is so, bro, what, <laughs> bro thinks he's the Titanic, <laughs> shut up man. With two new holes in my boat, I made my way over to Greater Marrow so I could pay for repairs, but found out the fishmonger had a quest for me that I needed new fishing gear for. One thing I forgot to mention about fish and dredge is each one falls into a fishing type. This typically corresponds to what depth the fish lives at, but can also describe their environments like volcanic fish that live in warmer water. In order to catch a fish of a certain type, you need fishing gear that covers that category. Some gear can also catch multiple fishing types, but that wasn't the case for me right now as my basic fishing rod could only catch coastal fish, and the fishmonger was requesting fish of the shallow type. This led me to buying a new fishing rod from the shipwright, covering only the shallow type. This was cool though, since you can also equip multiple gear pieces to cover multiple types of fish at the expense of inventory space. But I decided not to, as my boat space was already pretty limited due to me spending cash on a rod instead of repairing the two large holes from earlier. Probably not the most responsible choice, but sometimes you gotta live life on the edge. With my banged up boat, I set out to catch some new fish, reeling in some gold flounders to fill out one half of the fishmonger's quest and make some cash for repairs. Once my boat was fixed, I headed back out to sea to catch some eels for the rest of the fishmonger's quest and decided to do a little bit of exploring. This was the first time I started to experience strange things while out at sea. Oh, what's that? Oh, whoa, 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 Chelto, Chelto mate. Mm. Somebody told me that there were, uh, were uh, viewers out here. <laughs> chatters out here. While the viewers didn't stay for long, I found out these strange sightings were linked to my panic gauge, aka the giant eyeball at the top of the screen. The more red and frantic the eye gets, the more likely I am to experience a supernatural event, none of which are pleasant. The paranormal activity isn't limited to just the night either, and is what causes those feathered fish thieves to spawn during the day. Panic can be reduced by resting at docks and good lighting, two things I have been neglecting so far, so things are bound to get worse. This wouldn't be enough to dissuade me from exploring though, allowing me to read my first book, which I found out gives you perks like increased fishing speed when you finish reading them. I also found a fish altar that I needed to catch some cod for, giving me something cool to look forward to. As night rolled in, I discovered a crash boat with some loot inside that I plundered before finding another dock with a mansion. The mansion door was locked, which was probably for the best since it was giving off some pretty creepy vibes, meaning whoever stayed there was probably equally creepy. Since my mansion mischief was cut short, I sailed back to Little Meryl to sell some of the loot I picked up from the crash boat, and afterwards ran into the dock worker again, who had clearly seen one too many clutch streams. Hey, yo! Chat, is, is he, like, good? He's, <laughs> goodness gracious. Being that the dock worker was now a zombie, I felt kind of guilty, so to avoid accountability and possible legal action, I went back to Greater Meryl to sell my eels, only to find out they had spoiled during my adventures leaving me with nothing but rot, meaning I couldn't complete my quest for the fishmonger. Despite turning a man into a living corpse the day before, day 7 started off normally with another fishing venture. But then... Ooh, what is that? Ew! Now that I would seen my first mutated fish, I was given a sudden quest to show it to the fishmonger, so I headed back. Or at least I meant to before getting lost and spending some of my research points on new fishing gear at a random dock I found. When I made it back to the fishmonger and showed him the abnormal fish, he just smiled and smelled it. Are there no likable characters in this game, man? What? Once done violating the strange fish, he sliced into it, pulling out a crimson bordered handkerchief that would soon lead to the start of a crazy journey. The fishmonger also told me this wasn't his first time blowing bubbles on someone else's guppy, if you catch my drift. Meaning, I would be finding a lot more corrupted fish in the future. Shortly after, I ran into a mysterious figure who knew about the handkerchief, another proud member of the pocket watching committee it seems. The mystery man told me to meet him at Blackstone Isle, the dock from before that had the huge mansion, as he had a business proposition for me. I didn't really trust him, but anything was better than talking to the fishmonger in my opinion. When I got to Blackstone, the mysterious man introduced himself as the collector. 
and let me know he was interested in finding lost relics from a long lost boat of his. If I could find these relics, he promised to reward me, although he didn't really say how. For accepting his offer, I was given the ability to dredge up sunken wrecks, which are basically fishing spots for trinkets and boat upgrading materials. Once striking a deal with a man who could very well be the devil, I returned to Greater Merrill to sell my catch for the day, allowing me to pay off my lone boat and find out where I could find these sunken wrecks the collector mentioned. This led me to meeting a fresh face, a woman known as the Builder, who wanted me to collect resources for her to move to a nearby dock. Another side quest. I'm starting to see why this angler position was open in the first place. Being that I had a lot to get done, I set out to find some wrecks to explore, and nearly became one. Friend? Hey! Friend! What does he want? Oi! Oi! Wait, 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 wait! Never mind, not friend. If, if, if not friend, why friend shape? That just goes to show you, fake friends can literally be the death of you. While my circle was now smaller, I did manage to find a sunken wreck. And like I said earlier, these skill checks are no joke. We get the research part. That's pretty good. One. Oh. Two. Oh. Three. <laughs> four. Okay. Okay, wait. This is kind of like hard. Not in the good way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chat, I'm losing it, man. I shouldn't have, I should have played this game off stream. Hey, but we got through it. Gotta be trolling. <laughs> I'm not trolling, I'm actually trying. Although I successfully dredged up the wreck, it didn't have a relic the collector was after. So I decided to keep searching. In the meantime, oh I collected God. some eels to finally complete the fishmonger's quest from earlier and was given a second fishing quest. This time I needed to catch some squid and black groupers, both of which are nocturnal fish, meaning I'd have to look for them at night. And you can probably guess how that ended. Bro, you're kidding, bro. He turned the corner so fast. Please, no. No, 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 no. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Very classy, very, um, very legit, very disgusting, disgusting work. While collecting fish for the fishmonger and keeping my eyes peeled for sunken wrecks, I made some progress towards completing that mysterious cod altar from before and purchased a fishing rod that could catch both shallow and coastal fish, freeing up some space on my boat. But soon after, I completed the cod altar, which would have given me a rod that did the same thing, but for free. Coastal and shallow. Wait! So why'd I buy this? Definitely a scam by the local downs people. I spent a few days collecting late night fish and after multiple nights of risking my life, I was able to turn them into the fishmonger who rewarded me with a crab pot that I would need for his next quest. I also made enough cash to buy more fishing gear, allowing me to catch oceanic fish that are typically larger and worth more money. Fishing was cool and all, but I was more focused on finding these sunken relics for the collector and found my first real lead once talking to a grieving father in Little Mira. The father requested I find the remains of his son, who was lost at sea some years ago. Being that I was still looking for wrecks, I accepted the quest and spent all day searching but was only able to gather resources for the builder's moving trip and some crabs for the fishmonger, who gave me a final quest to find a mutated fish so he could see what happens when a person eats one. I seriously have to stop talking to this guy. Since I was having a hard time finding wrecked ships locally, I sailed out a ways to see if I could find something new. And I definitely did. Oh! What? But why? Sadly, that question would go unanswered, and I only start to form more questions once meeting a white robe cultist in a part of the sea known as the Devil's Spine. The deranged cultist asked me to be his initiate, giving me the title Herald of the Purge, tasking me with collecting planes from around Devil's Spine to help him on his quest. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy purges just as much as the next cultist, but for now, this was a little too crazy for me, so I'd have to come back and unmake the world later. During my time in Devil's Spine, I also met a traveling merchant who I could sell fish to and go to for repairs and upgrades. The merchant was out on sea documenting rare fish species and asked me to report the locations of four especially rare fish if I came across them while sailing. A huge step down from being the Harbringer of Doom, but maybe that was a good thing. 
Needless to say, my grand voyage was pretty eventful, but I ultimately failed to find a relic for the collector or the remains of the lost sailor for the grieving father, so I decided to head back to the Maros. Along the way, I scooped up a three-headed cod for the mutant fish quest the fishmonger gave me, and upon turning it in, he rewarded me with some research parts before saying he heard whispers from the fish and locking me out of the shop. At this point, I kind of assumed he would end up like the dock worker, so I decided to skip town before people started to realize I was always around at the time disaster struck. During my time on the run, I was able to find a wrecked ship near the back of Greater Mira, which held a bronze belt buckle belonging to the grieving father's son something he was happy to see, rewarding me with another research part. The good karma from this deed must have also worked immediately, because when I returned to Greater Mero, the fishmonger was completely fine, only complaining of a headache. A huge relief because I had no one to sell this fish to while he was playing mad scientist behind closed doors. While at Greater Mira, I also investigated boat upgrades a little more, and saw that they were pretty important to game progression, as you can modify your ship to hold more cargo and larger fishing gear. But they are also very demanding, requiring large amounts of cloth, lumber, and spare scrap from ship crashes. This convinced me to spend the next few days resource fishing, which I admit is not that interesting, but it did allow me to find my first relic that turned out to be a large key for that creepy collector guy who I still don't trust even a little bit. When I made it back to Blackstone and gave the collector the key, he only got upset that I didn't have the lock as well. It's cool though, it's not like I spent 20 days searching for that or anything. The collector stated that the relics had traveled further than he expected before reciting some words out of the crimson book he was holding, granting me a power known as haste, which is basically a speed boost. The collector then shared the location of the next relic, instructing me to start my search in a part of the sea known as the Gale Cliffs, and when I arrived, I immediately regretted it. Oh! <laughs> Ugh, I hate it down here. I hate it here already. Full disclaimer, things only get worse from here. Upon docking at the first town in the area known as Inkfell, I met a woman who was in need of a conger eel for a special dinner. A simple enough fishing request. The catch being that conger eels only show up during the night, meaning danger would be at an all time high. While at Ingfell, I asked around about shipwrecks in the area, leading me to meeting the retired whaler, an old man who seemed bitter towards his brother who stayed at the neighboring dock. But there's always two sides to the story, so maybe his brother's chill. Yeah, never mind, his brother stole the family crest and he lost it out of spite. I hate him now too. The whaler's brother, known as Hermit, wanted to move back home since his settlement was collapsing due to sudden earthquakes in the area. Oh, once again, people's personal problems are becoming mine. I agreed to help Hermit find the crest since I would be in the area looking for relics, but just know I'm not happy about it. Now that I was somehow involved in the brotherly beef, I started searching shipwrecks in the area coming across a lot of raw materials and trinkets. Great for building towards a bigger boat, but not so great for Hermit. It wasn't until a few days later I found a space within the cliffs that could potentially have the crest but I also found what was causing the earthquakes that led to it being lost in the first place. My mom told me if you can't beat them- OH! OH! WHAT?! Please. Oh my god, he's still coming. The giant fish was for sure a big problem, but at least now I knew I was fast enough to outrun it. Circling back around to the potential crest crevice, I was able to recover the cause of the brother's bitterness towards each other, and returned to Hermit who wanted me to give it to his brother along with his heartfelt apology. That's so sweet- <coughs> so, Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm good. The old whaler agreed to let his brother return, but needed time to clear out a living space for him. While that was going on, he wanted me to set off some explosives within the cliffs that would create a shortcut for the town. Another personal problem pushed on to me, but lucky for him, I like explosions, so I gladly set off the charges the whaler marked with yellow flags. Now, the last thing left to do was to move Hermit back home so him and his brother could finally reunite. And to reward my hard work, the old whaler gave me a free explosive, and I could come back to buy more whenever I needed them. I also managed to find a conger eel to give to the resident I met earlier, and was handed a fat check of $150. Maybe this angler job wasn't as bad as I thought. The free packed explosive I got was used to blow away the rubble at the hermit's old settlement, allowing me to find another relic for the collector. This time, it was a rusted music box. Hopefully, this is what that huge key goes to, or he's gonna tweak again. 
Since my relic hunt in Gale Cliffs was successful, I returned back to the collector to show him the music box, and he was in a better mood this time, cheerful even. I guess music really does make everything better. The collector once again read some whisper words from his crimson book to grant me a power, this one being known as Manifest, that would teleport me back to Blackstone once it was channeled. You know, when I was a kid, I really liked magic, but the collector doesn't really give me the wizard vibe, I mean, it could just be me. Leaving with my new power, my next destination was Stellar Basin, a part of the sea that looks like something you see feature on a trip planning website. But before I was ready to book a room, I upgraded the hull of my boat, giving me more space to hold fish, and bought a new fishing rod that allowed me to catch most fishing types except Abyssal and Hadal, just a precaution so I could be prepared for what Stellar Basin threw at me. Sailing into the basin, I found an old research outpost that was evacuated due to fear of retaliation according to a note I found. It seems whoever was here clearly made someone mad. Moving along the coast, I discovered a small dog that followed me back to my boat. I usually don't allow guests, but I guess he can stay for a little while. That dog is ugly, shut your mouth Mari, that dog is beautiful. Soon after, I met a researcher at another outpost who was originally staying at the abandoned research station I came across when first getting here. She explained that a large sea monster trashed her previous place, and now stayed in the middle of Stellar Basin, and she could really use my help researching the local species of fish, making me a proud member of the science team. While being promoted from angler to world-renowned scientist, however, the sneaky researcher also stole my new dog friend. But I guess it was for the best, considering I didn't really want the dog being swallowed by a giant fish. During my science project, I had a close encounter hey, with the monster wait. the researcher talked about, and made enough cash fishing to buy a new motor so I could run from all the new problems I kept finding. It also didn't take too long to capture all the fish for the researcher, but a scientist's work is never finished, and now I needed gear that could access abyssal fish. But lucky for me, the researcher had some prototype parts I could use to reel in deeper fish that she kept at her old outpost. Once retrieving the parts and having the researcher install them, I was also given a repulsion device that I could use at the old outpost that would temporarily get rid of the large monster that lashed out at me earlier, allowing me to gather deep water fish for free, or so I thought, 450? I'm doing this charity work? And, and they got me out here spending all this cash? What's all that about, man? So it turns out nothing is free when you're a fisherman. The problem now was the new gear the researcher gave me only covered abyssal fish, but I needed to also catch some hadal fish and was in desperate need of cash to upgrade the prototype gear so I could catch some. This led to me selling my old fishing rod. Not the biggest deal looking back on it, but at the time I was pretty emotional considering it got me through most of the game up until now. While collecting the specimen for my groundbreaking scientific research, I managed to find one of the four rare fish for the traveling merchant, but then I ditched it because I found the lost relic for the collector. This wasn't terrible though since I only needed to let the merchant know where the fish lives, not actually show her the fish. So in reality, I could just lie to her. When I finally caught all the scary fish the researcher wanted, she told me that the fish all held mutated cells due to the large monster staying in the middle of Stellar Basin, and that it wasn't safe to stay here, which was a good enough reason to leave for me. And after saying my farewells, I teleported back to Blackstone Ooh. using my manifest skill. The collector was pleased to see the ring. And I got another power known as Banish that temporarily prevents monsters from attacking the ship. A very powerful skill, but this was a huge red flag as it meant whatever I ran into next, I wouldn't be able to outrun with my haste ability. I also got to question the collector about what he planned on doing once he recovered all these relics to which he really didn't answer. The collector also told me about the old mayor of Greater Mera, who he didn't seem to get along with before he disappeared, seemingly lost at sea. A bit fishy if you ask me. Listen, before you leave, you had to have known that one was coming. It was It's literally a fishing game. Before sailing to the next relic location, I stopped by Greater Mera and was met by the lighthouse keeper who asked me if I had found what I was looking for, which was kind of strange, but I played along and told her almost. The lighthouse keeper then asked how I could be so sure if I said the same thing last time. Again, really weird because I don't remember ever talking to her about the relics. To be completely honest, up until now, I was convinced the old woman hated me. But before I could ask her some more questions, she left leaving me super creeped out. 
kind of a reoccurring theme at this point. Speaking of oh creepy things, God. the next relic what? location was a creepy swamp known as Twisted no. Strand. I don't exactly know what it is about what? swamp sections in games, but they never give off good vibes, and this one was no different. Moving deeper into the swamp, I came across some kind of trap that didn't look like it was for catching fish, but that's just a hunch. At the center of the swamp, I met the airman, an old pilot that was living there after crash landing with his deceased squad mates. The airman warned me about the monsters of the swamp he named Mindsuckers and how they preyed on his squad before their untimely deaths. What a lovely campfire story. But of course, no story would be complete without a random fisherman cameo, and apparently now was the time for one, judging by the airman asking for assistance in dealing with the Mindsuckers. The plan was as follows. Make bait for luring in monsters, set monster bait in one of those huge Huge traps we saw earlier, and finally, blow monsters sky high using mortar shells. A three step plan of mass monster destruction. Since I'm a sucker for explosions, I agreed to help and began phase one of the plan that included making bait and gathering mortar parts. Lucky for me, I found one of the mortar parts on my way into the swamp by a crash plant, so I kind of knew what to look for finding the rest of the parts pretty easily. The next step of phase one was to make monster bait, which I needed to gather specific swamp fish for. Sounds simple enough, is what a fool would say. During my time of gathering fish, I was slapped around oh! by swamp tentacles and I got trolled by tree roots, all while having my mind sucked. Oh, he's sucking up on my mind. But it was all worth oh, wow. it because in the end, I got to see some sick monster explosions and avenge the Boy. airman squat mates. But let's be real, we just came for the explosions. The corpse of the last mind sucker was hiding an expensive necklace, which turned out to be the relic the collector sent me out here to get in the first place meaning I could finally leave Shrekville, but first I decided to do some snooping. This led me to finding an abandoned dock with some markings that did not look like something Donkey drew. The markings came in three sets, the first depicting a book being pulled up from the ocean, the second showing a pentagram with five markings and a person in the center, and the third presenting a book with a downwards arrow towards the ocean. Now, I'm no detective, but who else has a book and is into collecting things? The fishmonger, I knew he wasn't to be trusted. Since my previous snooping led to a pretty important clue, I continued to investigate near the swamp, finding a few research parts and some fish, which wasn't a spicy clue, but was still good because I was closing in on my next big boat upgrade. But then I met some figures in purple hoods that might be creepier than the average clutch subscriber, but uh, it's close. This wasn't my first time meeting these cryptic Power Rangers either, as I met some figures in red during my first exploration trip where I crossed paths with that tweaker in white. It's good to know tweakers come in all colors. The thing about the figures was that they wanted specific fish to eat, which I couldn't really complete for the Red Rangers at the time due to my limited gear. I sure hope they're doing okay. The purple posse were no different, requesting a tarpon that lived around the swamp. Once gathering some tarpon and returning, the figure made another request. This one being a horseshoe crab, but I have no information on where those live, so I would have to keep my eyes peeled while on my relic hunt. Speaking of relics, the collector was happy to have another, rewarding me with a power called Atrophy, a power that I could use to harvest all fish in an area instantly, making me the Grim Reaper of all fish. Or is that just the Flying Dutchman? While thinking about what my new title should be, the collector informed me that this next relic was the final one needed for his grand scheme, directing my search towards the Devil's Spine, which meant I'd have to explain to the White Tweak Ranger why I ditched him 40 days ago. But before dealing with my past, I stopped by Greater Mero to see if I could find more clues about what the relics were really for, running into the Lighthouse Keeper along the way. Instead of heckling me though, she told me about the old mayor of Greater Mero, someone who had become a painful memory to her. Maybe an ex-boyfriend or something? The current mayor of Greater Mero also had a story about the old mayor. Looks like the old mayor was quite the player in his day. Regardless of the story, the old mayor's journey always ended the same way, with him just disappearing one day. My working theory is that the collector used the old mayor as a sacrifice in order to obtain his mysterious crimson book, not too far-fetched considering all the stuff we've seen up until now. To prevent my story from ending the same way the old mayor's did, I spent some time preparing for my journey to Devil's Spine, consisting of me collecting resources for boat upgrades and making some extra cash for explosives that I sailed to the Gale Cliffs for, a normal fishing trip. But would I really be mentioning the trip if it was normal? Oh, <gasps> it's the old mayor! What? Yep, that's right, the playboy pimp of Greater Amaro himself, the old mayor. 
to be honest, I can see why the ladies were going for him. He has a nice... Oh! Ew! Dude! Uh, vibe about him? The former mayor turned castaway made it clear that the collector and his wife were the reason behind the weird occurrences happening to Greater Mera and the surrounding towns. The book the collector was using to grant his powers was obviously bad news. The old mayor also spoke about the lighthouse keeper, saying that she was there the day the book was dredged up and she knew where to return it. I know I keep saying this, but this angler job was really not a good life decision. Once the old mayor shared his story, he went back to his sorrow-filled campfire and I can't lie, I was starting to feel kind of bad for the guy. So I did the only thing a good person would do and went back to minding my business in another part of the sea. This led me to discovering another rival fish gang. The sea beef gets pretty serious apparently. The gold robes were no different than the previous sea gangs I ran into. The only change being that I could actually catch most of the fish they wanted. While being initiated, I found another one of those fish altars. This one needing four different kinds of sharks, something I decided I would come back to as I found them. Once I collected the fish for the gold goon, they had one final request, a blue crab. Not ideal considering I have been neglecting crab cages entirely since the fishmonger gave me that free one. That being said, at least I knew the crabs lived around Stellar Basin, so I headed there after upgrading my crab pot and buying a new motor at Greater Mera. On my way to Stellar Basin, I found a message for help and a stranded castaway who asked if his boys had sent me to save him. I told him yes because the only thing worse than an old person is a crying old person, but I have no idea who he's talking about. The castaway requested a ride to Little Mero so he could reunite with his crew, which I figured was a small task so I took him free of charge. The castaway was grateful for the ride back, giving me his old captain's ring that I immediately pawned at the trader shop, scoring a pretty penny. Soon after, I sailed back over to Stellar Basin and completed that shark altar that gave me a better version of the prototype gear I upgraded the last time I was here. Not a bad reward, but also not really a good one. When I found a good spot for catching crabs, I set up my trap and now just needed to wait for it to find something. But I have the patience of a toddler, so figured I would also set up a trap for some horseshoe crabs I found out live in Twisted Strand for the purple people. That sounds weirdly racist. During this process, I also dropped a crab trap near the red robes and devil's spine. When I returned to Stellar Basin on day 74, I was happy to have caught the crabs needed for the road rangers and hurried back to see if they held secrets about the collector or the relics. Instead, I was given a book on advanced fishing to read. I have never hated reading more in my life before now. While reading the new edition of Junie B. Jones, I collected my crab pot full of horseshoe crabs from Twisted Strand and returned to the Purple Palace only to find out they had died while waiting on me. You don't think I could still take the book, right? <coughs> Oi mate, what's all this? Haha, <laughs> beautiful day we're having officer. I'll talk to you guys later. It's that clutch bloke again. Unfortunately, the robes in red met the same fate the purple gang met. I found out after googling, this is the only quest that is timed in the entire game. And the figure in red has been waiting here since like day 20, so that makes sense. Being that my side quests were dead ends, I decided to help the strange man from before in the white robe unmake the world or whatever he said before. Leading to me finding an altar in Devil's Spine that wanted some squat lobsters I could catch with my crab pots. While waiting, I participated in my favorite pastime of blowing things up, allowing me to find my second rare fish for the traveling merchant who rewarded me with some research parts. The crab traps were still trapping, so I also did some random loot hunting and found out why there weren't more people living in Devil's Spine. Oh my god, that guy came. He finally came. How very annoying of him. That big fish is actually blind. It turns out that the way it locates me is through the smaller fish that swarm me. I guess it wouldn't be called Devil's Spine without monsters, to be fair. Once repairing the holes left in my boat, I returned to my traps and found a few crabs waiting for me. This is when I realized that the crabs needed for the shrine were different, and I needed one I had not seen before known as a spider crab so I couldn't complete the altar just yet. But it wasn't a complete waste of time because I could still sell what I didn't need, giving me just enough cash for a tier 3 boat upgrade. By the time the 100 days was over, I wanted to at least hit the final tier of upgrades, something that would be way easier if I didn't have to constantly pay for repairs. Still searching for crabs, I found a stone tablet and some wreckage that gave me a quest to return to the trader at Little Mero to get it examined. Maybe it would lead to something important. But before heading there, I wanted to finish up things at Devil's Spine, because this place doesn't exactly pass the vibe check, and I don't really want to have to come back. 
I returned to my crab traps once again to find a spider crab, unlocking the altar that gave me some loot and a fathomless flame. I'm sure Timmy Tweaker will be happy to see this one. While heading back, I also picked up another stone tablet that I noticed was marked with a symbol different than the first one. I wonder how many of these are actually out here. The fathomless flame I found went to one of the three statues on the dock with the old guy who wanted to end the world meaning I needed two more to complete the quest. Wasting no time, I set out again and found a third stone tablet before locating the second flame altar that wanted a mutated fish. A huge relief because I hate waiting on the crab pots to finish. Once reeling in a mutated sea robin, I returned to complete the altar and was rewarded with another flame and an encrusted talisman that boosted fishing speed. But this talisman was huge, so I probably wouldn't be fishing faster anytime soon. Okay, so now is confession time. I was lost a lot during this entire flame hunt quest, but didn't really have to be because the altars are literally marked on the map with an X. That's fine though because maps are for tryhards and I'm a chill laid back kind of guy, you know? The last altar was tucked away behind some debris that I blew up. <laughs> Bomba. The third shrine wanted some local fish from Devil's Spine that were surprisingly easier to get than the previous two shrines. What surprised me more was the reward I got for completing the shrine, being given two pieces of refined metal, the most expensive material in the game, perfect for reaching the final tier of upgrades, and you know, the flame too if that's important to you. With the last two flames collected, I returned back to the tweaking ranger in white, whose actual title is the fanatic, but you'll see why my title fits him more in a second. Once lighting the statues, the fanatic began to chant on top of an altar. As he chanted, the flames from the statues began to engulf him until he was nothing more than a pile of ash. Hey, I told you, I could smell the tweak on people. Searching through the pile of ash, I found an antique pocket watch. Looks like the old man had some drip on him. The pocket watch was the final relic the collector was looking for, but I wasn't really in a rush to give it to him as I didn't know exactly what he would do with me now that he no longer needed me. Now that I'd indirectly led to another person's downfall, it was time to skip town once again. This time, I decided to lay low at Little Marrow and showed the trader the stone tablets I found. To my surprise, he already had one and used mine to form a square key that would unlock a door, but the trader had no idea where. Ugh, I guess it wouldn't be a secret side quest if he just told me. While in the Greater Marrow area, I stopped by to talk to the lighthouse keeper about the crimson book the collector had. When I asked what she knew about the book, the only thing she told me was that I knew it must be returned and that I should move on for her sake, answering exactly zero of my questions, but that's just old people for you. Since I was still getting nowhere with the lighthouse keeper, I turned my attention to collecting the two remaining rare fish for the traveler, picking up some explosives from the whaler because most of the rare fish have been behind rubble so far, not because I find them sexy or anything. Behind the now exploded debris and twisted strand, I found my third rare fish for the traveling merchant, who rewarded me with my standard research part payment before telling me to check the gale cliffs for the elusive ore fish. And elusive is for sure an understatement, as I almost gave up on the search before realizing I had fallen for the oldest trick in the book. Maybe it's like a behind the waterfall angle. Oh my god it is! It's a behind the- and then I get immediately, immediately gets, gets clapped, immediately gets hull damaged. I hate it. I hate it here. In addition to the final rare fish, there was also a hidden treasure chest hiding a bag of doubloons and some refined metal, a well-deserved reward for searching high and low for these fish. The merchant also rewarded me with another two research parts. That wasn't as cool as buried treasure, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Finishing the rare fish quest meant I could move on to finding out what this huge slab key went to, making my way back to Devil's Spine to investigate which ended in complete failure. Boy. Um, thanks, please. Nope, guess not. Oh! 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 <laughs> well, um, that is about as bad as it could have been. I hated Devil's Spine so much that I gave up completely on the trader's quest and was ready to give the collector all the relics. But when I went to give him the pocket watch, the game gave me an interesting choice. Okay, we can deliver the relic or conceal the relic? You climb the broken- let's conceal the relic first. By concealing the relic, I was able to question the collector himself about the book, to which he played dumb, dodging my questions before realizing I was serious. The collector told me all about how I was there the day he dredged up the book, and so was she, his wife I assume from the conversation with the old mayor earlier. Apparently, I begged the collector to wipe my memories of that day. Some huge reveals were going down right now, but there was one thing the collector didn't tell me. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
What? So it turns out the collector was me, or well, a part of me? The part of me that I left behind the day I chose to forget about the past. With his now broken face, the collector told me the book had the power to bring back his wife? Our wife? Something like that. But before giving him the relic, I wanted to take one last shot at finding out what the stone tablet key went to. And after a rigorous search, I found the location in the Devil's Spine. The stone tablet key went to the door of an ancient lighthouse that was used to keep the evils of the sea at bay long ago. The lighthouse was no longer active, but I managed to retrieve its lost light, known as the Flame of the Sky, that made a pretty big difference in the dark. Following the successful search, I spent my last few days achieving the final hull upgrade for my boat, and was pretty happy with how it turned out. On a scale from 1 to 10, how big is your boat, hmm? My boat's kind of like a 10 right now, I'm not gonna lie to you. Let me go ahead and toot my little horn. Okay. That's enough of that. <laughs> I broke it. I don't I don't care anymore. I, it, I'm, I'm over it. I don't care. Don't care. Bad boat. L boat. 1 out of 10 boat. I don't care anymore. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Now that I prepared for the worst, I went to Blackstone Isle to have some quality alone time. Delivered the relic. He approaches, drawing closer with an incessant ticking. You have the pocket watch. You take out the watch, its once frozen hands are now inexplicably twitching in a rhythmic struggle. Trying but failing to move forwards, you place it in front of the collector. Though it has been some decades since I last laid eyes upon this, the sound of its mechanisms has grown no less unpleasant. And with that, our collection is complete. I must admit, I'm surprised. I did not think you had the determination for such a job. Now, with these five relics in our possession, only one thing remains. We will see her again soon. It will all be worth it. You know this. Know what? It will become apparent soon enough. We must make one final voyage. This time, I will be with you. This is the place. This is where she was taken from us, and where we can at last bring her back. Only here, and only because of what we've achieved. You open the book, its pages are frosted with ice, and a chill mist rises around your fingers. You begin to read aloud. To release a lost one, frozen in time. You throw the pocket watch overboard. And tethered by chains in the deep, you throw the necklace overboard. Bind them to this world once more. You throw the ring overboard. Open the door to, to the starry heavens. You slot the key into the lock of the music box and lay the weary world to rest. You throw the music box overboard, its key left unturned. Unshackled. All right. Let's see what happens. What's 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 really going on out here in, in the streets? Oh, that don't seem good. That don't sound good. I assume so the messages in the bottle, right? I assume the messages in the bottle were from my wife. This is my wife, and I assume that she died, maybe, while we're at sea? This is kind of dramatic, I'm not gonna- Oh, what is that in the background? So, you know that thing I said at the start about it not being my what fault, unspeakable evil, yada yada yada? Well, it was technically true. Although my journey didn't have the best ending, I accomplished a lot during my time at sea. Starting off as a humble angler, I helped a lot of people mend relationships, avenge lost comrades, and eventually went on to become a world-renowned scientist. Granted, my research did have some shady, dark points, but I think it was well worth it to make the world a better place, or well, what's left of the world? If you agree with my research methods, a like on the video would be appreciated, and you should consider subscribing. I stream this whole 100 day run live right here on YouTube and really enjoy talking to you guys, even when stuff like this happens. Do you stream on Twitch? Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, only on YouTube. Clutch, would, would you rather watch a tree grow or a, or a knee grow? Knee grow? Oh, oh pfft, okay, I've been, I've been scammed. I'm, okay, wait a minute. It's... Yeah, never mind. I don't think subscribing is a good life choice. Kind of like being an angler, but I'll leave that up to you. And to my current subscribers, I really do appreciate the support. We've grown massively since last month, so thanks once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters.